can't help being afraid. Professor Fred's Movie Marvels is a show you must tune in. It's broadcast every week on SEC TV. It'll make you jump out of your skin. Professor Fred's Movie Marvels tonight. Welcome, students, to the fantastical, allegorical, bizarre and uh, discombobulatedly discombobulated world of Professor Fred's Movie Marvels and Schlock Cinema. I am Professor Fred, your mentor of the miasmatic, your guide to the bizarre, unbelievable depths and hills of grade Z movie making. And have we got a fantastic film for you tonight. How do I characterize this one? It's a Japanese-American co-production with pretty decent script, uh, good dialogue, excellent acting, and copious amounts of extremely cool theremin music. You don't get any better than that. This actually might be too good for Schlock Cinema, but we don't care. We're going to show it anyway. It's 1962's The Manster, and it's sort of a mad scientist thematic film, you know, the, uh, the J. Carroll Nash style mad scientist, uh, but it's actually sort of a potpourri of mad scientist cliches, just about everyone that had been in existence till 1962. In fact, there's so many cliches, pick your favorite cliche of the movie, and uh, somehow all these cliches add up together in this wonderful discombobulated, discombobulated potpourri, which is far greater than the sum of its collective parts. I think you'll enjoy the actors and their characters. The mad scientist is played by Tatoshi Nakamura, uh, who playing Dr. Robert Suzuki. He had to Americanize him a little bit for his name, but uh, he plays it with a lot of depth. Now, take a pinch of Alan Ladd, mix in just a little dash of Lon Chaney Jr., and you get actor Peter Dinelly as Larry Stanford, the American reporter who gets mixed up in an extremely negative way with Dr. Suzuki. As for the other thespians, how about Jane Hilton, deliciously overacting as Larry's hapless wife, and the sultry Terry Zimmern plays Tara, the seductress who gets Larry smitten with her and lures him into the clutches of the evil Dr. Suzuki. Throw in some cool monster transformation scenes, an erupting volcano, and geisha house debauchery, and you've got yourself a cool phantasmagorical 60s pastiche of every cliche imaginable on the planet on a mad roller coaster ride that you will never forget. All right, well, as the great classic blues singer Joe Turner would say, stop all that yakety yak, because it's time to watch the movie. So settle down, have fun, but don't drink that bottle of sake until after you've watched the opening scene. I think we're ready. Igor, are all the students chained up? Excellent. Roll them. Met the monsters from my favorite movies last night. Start the projector. I met the monsters from my favorite movies last night.
Did he come back? He's down in the lab now. I locked the door. You'd better take this with you. I thought he'd come back. He's like an animal now. He comes back to where he was fed the last time. But he never should have gotten out in the first place. He visited a house in the village last night. It's not easy to keep a thing like that from attracting too much attention. I'm afraid there's only one thing to do with Kenji now. Emiko, I can't let you out of there. I was careless with Kenji, and look what happened. You don't understand me anymore, do you? I'm sorry, Emiko. <laughs> Kenji, get back! You've changed even more, haven't you? That Kenji. Suppose you understand me now any more than she does. You were my brother. You're an experiment that didn't work out. I'm sorry, Kenji. Silly to ask, because this is Dr. Robert Suzuki's place. It's the only place around here. I'm afraid you can't see the doctor now. Oh, no, wait a minute. I've come all the way from Tokyo and halfway up the mountainside in the taxi they saved from the Ark, and then by making like a mountain ghost for the last few hundred yards. <laughs> Where's the good doctor? Are you the man from World Press? That's right. Larry Stanford, the brilliant and highly underpaid foreign correspondent. Tell you the truth, from what my boss says, I don't think there's much of a story here, but if there is, I want to get it. Perhaps the doctor can give you a few minutes. I'll tell if you're here. Please come in. Mr. Stanford, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I'd have forgotten about your appointment. As a matter of fact, your chief, Mr. Matthews, more or less pushed me into it over the phone. I'm not sure my work is ready for publicity yet. Well, from what the boss said, I gather you're working on the secrets of evolution or something like that. Sounds great, but will it sell newspapers? I'm a theoretical scientist. Most of my work is done on paper. Have you got anything ready for publication yet, Doc? Not yet. I can only tell you this. Look into the sky at night, and you will see a star maybe one billion light years away. The light that you see started from that star, even before this world existed. That's my work, the principles of existence. 
But sometimes it frightens me. Good. Then maybe we got a story. One more good one before I leave Japan. Oh? Are you leaving? Yeah, after this assignment. This globetrotting is getting me down. Besides, I have a wife in New York that I haven't seen for a long time. Far too long. How old are you, Mr. Stanford? 35. Forgive me. I ask personal questions sometimes. It's the scientist in me. I'm interested in the way people develop. The glandular type and so on. May I ask a few more questions? Well, I'm supposed to be the interviewer, but if you want to, go ahead. You look like a strong man. Have you ever had any major illnesses? Well, it sounds like the army all over again. Nothing worse than chickenpox. And uh, in this time you've been separated from your wife, have you been, uh, that is to say, uh, have you had any other kind of companionship? Well, I've been a good boy, if that's what you mean, Doc, but uh, now maybe we are getting just a little personal. Oh, I'm sorry. You want to hear about my work, don't you? All right. Could you use a little refreshment while we're talking? As long as it's daytime size. Scott, our local version of it. I thought it tasted different. Well, Doc, what's the story? Well, Mr. Stanford, uh, are you familiar with the latest thinking about cosmic rays and evolution? Oh, vaguely. The rays come out of space, and every thousand years or so, they cause a mutation, cause some animal to give birth to a slightly different species. Is that right? That'll do. Now you can understand what I mean when I tell you that I have a theory as to the cause of this change in species, uh, this mutation. I believe it can be done. Not with radiation, Mr. Stanford, but chemically. I've tried a few experiments with plants and fungus. You got any samples? Unfortunately, nothing I can show, only theoretical records. But I don't think they make sense to you. Well, it sounds great in scientific circles, Doc, but uh, it's not exactly what I'd call front page stuff. Hey, you know, it's kind of stuffy in here. It's the heat from the mountain. I use it sometimes for experiments. Will you excuse me, Mr. Stanford? I'll go down to the lab and bring you up some photos of my fungus experiments. Really? They might prove interesting to you. I'd appreciate that. Are you sure what you're doing is absolutely right? Right? Don't you see him? He's perfect for it. Besides, I've changed the enzyme. It's got to work this time. A physical and a psychological change. We'll keep records on every move he makes. That's not what I mean. Do you have the right to do this to him? After all, the others were different. They volunteered. But Tara, he's exactly the type I need. This is for science, for human knowledge. What happens to one man doesn't make any difference. You didn't seem to care for the others, Tara. I forgot how to care about anybody a long time ago. You ought to know that. Good. Keep it that way. Doc, I'm sorry I didn't mean to be rude. I, I just couldn't keep my eyes open. Oh, I feel that way myself many times up here. Oh, seemed to have collected myself a kink in the neck, too. Uh, these are the pictures I thought you might be interested in. 
Well, I'll take those back to Tokyo with me, if you don't mind, Doc. Oh, by all means. How about one for the road? That's not a bad idea. Might wake me up. I'll be coming down to Tokyo very shortly. We must get together there. I could use a little vacation from my work. Sure, that'd be fine. Here's the morning report for you. Thanks. I'm forced to agree with you, Larry. Not much to this Dr. Suzuki report. I understand he's independently wealthy, one of these wealthy crackpots. Oh, he's not such a bad guy. He serves lousy whiskey, though. Gave me a hangover on two of them. As a matter of fact, he phoned up this morning, said he was coming to Tokyo. Wants to take me out on some fancy dinner or something. Geisha party? Who knows? Anyway, I'm just filling in time till I head for New York and Linda. This globetrotting almost broke us up. By the way, Larry, you're going to be here a few days. I've got a report here on some smuggling going on down in Hong Kong. I wonder if you could hop a plane and go down there. Uh-uh. No dice, Ian. You pulled this one more story routine on me once too often. This time, I'm going home. I'll tell you what you can do with that report. What's that? Make a paper airplane out of it and sail it out the window. Matthews? Oh, yes. Just a moment. Larry, it's for you. New York. <laughs> Can't imagine who it might be. OK, I'll take it over here. And how about some privacy? Put that call through here. Oh, darling, it's wonderful to hear your voice. What? How everything's all right. I just wanted to hear you. When are you coming home, Larry? Well, just a few more days, darling. Lots of paperwork and stuff. You know how it is. After that, no more traveling. We can make a real start all over again. Huh? I love you too, darling. But how do you know you love me? I might not be the same person. I'm sure you're the same, darling. I haven't changed either. I've been thinking about you all the time. I've had a picture of you in my mind. It's a nice picture, but it's not the same as the real thing. Well, it won't be long now, darling. I've been thinking of you all the time. We're going to some kind of a party tonight. I'll pretend you're along. Well, have a good time, Larry. <laughs> Say in Japan, come fight. As we say in America, bottoms up. You know, Doc, I don't know which I like better, Japanese sake or Japanese geisha. What's the difference? Plenty of both here. No, I'm seriously, Doc. I've never had time before to do this sort of thing. You have no idea how stuffy these political interviews and press conferences can be. With so little time left, please, let me be your host and let me show you things you have never seen before in Japan. I've been working rather hard myself lately. Larry, I like you. And uh, I'd like to show you more of Japan. Doc, you've got yourself a deal. Kanpai. Bottoms up. Tell her she smooches good. Oh, I don't know. Now, wait, well, I haven't finished yet. Tell her she smooches good. And tell her I like to give her some advanced lessons, then. Eh? I don't have to tell her anything, Larry. I think she understands you very well. Maybe, but let's find out. Hey, listen, girl, just, I think you're all very beautiful. Very beautiful. But I got a special thing. All right, Ian, I'm uh, 
A week overdue in New York, and I've been like this for three days. Let's have the sermon and get it over with. You know me better than that, Larry. Your wife called again. So she called, so what? Look, it's really none of my business, but you were supposed to be home by now. Listen to me, Ian. I've been working very hard for a good many years, and now I'm supposed to go back and change myself to a desk in the New York office. Okay, if that's the way it's gotta be, it's gotta be. But before I go, I gotta do some of the things I never had a chance to do before. This guy Suzuki just came into my life in time. Well, that reminds me, I got a train to catch. He's taking me to a Hot Springs hotel. And hey, Linda? You already said it, Ian. It's none of your business. country's greatest treasures, hot mineral water from deep in the earth. It has wonderful effects and sometimes strange effects. Well, I've had hot baths before, but never in such fancy surroundings. You know, Doc, it's amazing what I never got to see and do in this country all the time I've been here. I didn't realize what fun I was missing. Still, I'll have to leave sometime. Yes, I know. Oh, uh, I have another surprise for you. Oh, what's that? Do you remember my assistant? Tara, you met her at the lab. She happens to be here at the hotel. I think you'll find her especially interesting. Why especially? Her talents. She is, first of all, an exceptionally beautiful woman. She's been to nearly any country you can name. She's intelligent, affectionate, and, uh, well, how shall I say it? Not unwilling to have a little adventure now and then. Sounds too good to be true. Tell me, when do I meet this lovely mythical creature again? Why not now? I'm sure you two remember each other. Well, hello again. Well, say, I guess we must have your bath here. You go ahead, we'll wait. Why wait? I can see you're not familiar with Japanese customs, Mr. Stafford. You mean everybody? Together? Same bath? Hmm. Well... Larry, just to remember something. I promised to make a phone call to Tokyo. Very important. I wonder if you two will excuse me. With pleasure. Well. Follow me. Well, now I've seen everything, or I'm about to. There are two baths, Mr. Stanford. One for you and one for me. I see. What's this, the wall of Jericho? We operate on the honor system here. You mean this is the Japanese equivalent of a bundling bar? Well, it keeps us apart, but uh, not too far apart. The doctor tells me these are mineral baths and good for me. Hope he's right. How do you like it, Mr. Stanford? My name is Larry. I think it's great. Having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. Well, I'm not very far. Tell me more about yourself. Well, there's not very much to tell. I worked pretty hard all my life, and now I'm just starting to enjoy myself. How about you? Where are you from? You speak English beautifully. I speak many languages. Is the water hot enough for you? Yeah, plenty hot. The real Japanese bath should be as hot as you can take it. That way you get the benefit of the minerals in the water. Well, I seem to be getting some sort of benefit right now.
anything the matter, Larry? Yeah, I've had enough. I'm getting out. That's a musical martini. Hello, Larry. Well, this is quite a surprise. I think I'd better go. I think you'd better stay. We've all got some things to talk about. Anybody mind if I fix myself a drink? You know, Ian, there's a name for a guy who'll pull a trick like this. Ian had nothing to do with it. I dragged him here. I flew in today, Larry. I couldn't stand it any longer. Ian wouldn't tell me a thing, but it wasn't hard to guess that you'd found company. Sorry, Larry. Yeah, sure. All right, let's not draw this one out. Let's make it front page, top banner line now. So you found out, so what? Darling, I... I came here so as I could see you. So as you could see me. I don't want things to go on this way, Larry. You've got to make a choice right now. The girlfriend or me. Tara, I don't think we're wanted here. Let's go someplace and finish the evening. Good night, Mrs. Stanford. Larry, I'll wait here till midnight, then I'm leaving. The choice is yours. I made my choice. Oh, Ian. Ian, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Fight. That's all you can do. I want to fight, Ian. But he's changed. He's, he's so different. Oh, there's still hope. Look, I'll wait here till midnight. I can talk to him alone. If he's not back, I'll go to the hotel. And then? And then I, I've lost the battle. What else can I do? You want me to stay here for a while? No. No, please go. I, I've got to work this out for myself. Good luck, Linda. Thanks, Ian. Tara, I figured you'd live in a place like this. It fits you. It's beautiful. Larry, why did you come with me tonight? Why did you make that choice? I'll tell you the truth, Tara. It's you I want. I feel comfortable with you. Well, something strange has been happening to me lately. I, I can't explain it. You're the only one that seems to understand. Don't ever leave me. 
No, Larry, not this way. What do you mean, not this way? When I belong to a man, no one else does. If it can't be that way, then I don't want him. You're thinking about Linda? Yes. She's not going to give up so easily, Larry. I know how a woman thinks. If I'm not mistaken, she's waiting for you at your apartment right now. She said she'd leave if I didn't come back. That won't settle it. You must go and tell it's finished. It would be best that way. You wait for me here? I'll wait for you to come back. If you come back. Go, Linda, go home. Harry, what's the matter? What is it? Can I help you? Nothing's the matter. I don't need any help. I just want you to leave. I know I shouldn't have stayed here, but I couldn't give up that easily. Give up what? What we never had? Because I've been here all this time, you know. I've asked you to join me overseas more than once. Larry, what sort of a life is that? Living in hotels, places not even on the map, picking up and moving every time there's a new war or revolution? You married me? You knew I was a foreign correspondent? Yes, I know, but I figured one day you could settle down. Settle down, that's a good way to put it. Settle down like mud in a pool. Bridge on Wednesdays, cocktail Thursdays, PDA Fridays. But you know I, I can't give you this that. kind of stuff, Linda. Go home and find someone else. Larry, what's happened to you? I don't know, Linda. I just want you to let me alone, that's all. Just leave me alone. Go away. I won't let you alone, Larry. I'm fighting for something that belongs to you and me. I don't know how it happened, but it won't last. This woman, she's got you all mixed up so you can't think straight. I don't know how it started. Maybe a weak moment. Weak? Maybe you... You think I'm weak? You think I covered all those wars and revolutions because I was weak? Or maybe it's because I never put you in your place before, never slapped you down when you needed it. Harry, what's gotten into you? Nothing's gotten into me! I just became my real self for once, that's all. Nobody's going to tie me down anymore. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Vedas. singing. I don't know why I came in. I, I was just passing by. I guess you don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe that's just as well. Makes it easier to talk. I've got to talk to someone. I've got to get it out of me. I've got to get it out of me. I thought you weren't coming back. You were a long time. I told you. After Linda left, I went out for a walk. Where did you go? I don't know. Hey, fix me another drink, will you? It was, it was like a dream, sort of nightmare. Only I don't know where the dream stopped and the real thing began. I came to a temple, I remember that. And then, I was walking, just walking. Does your hand hurt? Those prayer beads, where did you get them? I don't know, picked them up someplace. I can't remember. I have a feeling I don't want to remember. I want to forget. That's something I can do, help you forget. everything about this place but the music <laughs> well maybe I'm getting a little senile you're as young as you ever were Ian, and as kind it's sweet of you to bring me here no I was getting a bit lonely it's an understatement I was getting ready to scream then I asked you here because I want to talk to you about Larry what the devil's gotten into him lately I don't know maybe it's what you just said the devil's gotten into him. He used to be a good reporter, Linda. All reliable. Now when I want him, I can hardly find him. And when I do, I can't seem to break through to him. You say hello, and he starts an argument. I've never seen anyone change so quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem the same person. What are you gonna do? You can't stay here in Tokyo forever and watch Larry go to pieces like this. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do, Ian. But I'm sure of one thing. I still love Larry, and I'm not gonna run away. Guess I'll just have to stick around for a while and, and hope. Well, I knew if I kept looking, I'd find you. All right, you found me, now what? We've got a pretty big story to cover this morning. What's the matter with your hand? I burned it. When are you coming back to work, Larry? Seems to me I got some vacation due. Yes, you have, but you're still being carried in my books. I think I have a right to know what your plans are. Plans? Who has any plans? Well, Ian, do me a favor. If you're not drinking, leave me alone, will you? I was about to. I've got an office to take care of, you know. But I have a suggestion. How about tonight? You and I used to go on some pretty good binges together. Not tonight. Look, Larry. Confession's good for the soul and all that. Are you sure there isn't something you'd like to tell me? You're pressing your luck, Ian. All right, Larry, all right. 
Whatever what's eating you stops eating. You've got a job waiting. But remember this, it can't wait forever. Where'd you get those? Get what? Those. Oh, I don't know, picked them up somewhere. They're Buddhist prayer beads. You don't say. Well, I just thought it odd you had them. They're common around here, but I've never seen you with anything like that before. There must be a lot of things you've never seen, Ian. Yes. The Buddhist prayer beads. As a matter of fact, I talked to quite a few Buddhists recently. I found out one very good thing about them. What's that? They mind their own business. All right, Larry. Look at that, Tara. There's a definite cycle. That proves another theory of mine. The change doesn't come all at once. Larry Stanford right now is going through the metamorphosis. This is his old self here at the bottom of each curve. And this is his new self, actually a different species of man at the top. But notice how the waves are rising. Before long, he'll be entirely on the top, entirely a new being. Robert, I don't like it. That's your privilege. Not everyone's interested in the mutation. That's not what I mean. I don't like what I'm doing. I know you had to keep him in Tokyo, and at first I didn't care. Any emotion I ever had was killed in me a long time ago. But maybe I've just a little left, and I don't like watching it happen to him. Are you falling in love with him, Tara? I don't think I'm able to fall in love. You don't have any illusions about us, do you? You know where you found me. And you know what happens to me if I have to go back there. That's the only reason I stayed with you, Robert. Can I make it any clearer than that? Look at her, Tara. Take another look at Emiko. You knew her, Tara. When she was... Oh, what shall we say? When she was an ordinary woman. Not a bad-looking woman. Remember? Can you hear me, Emiko? Can you understand what I'm saying? You think I'm heartless, don't you, Tara? You like to pretend to be a woman without a soul. But these things really bother you, don't they? I think you forget that Emiko was my first human experiment. That she begged me to try the enzyme out on her. And when I wouldn't, she took it herself. And you forget that my brother Kenji volunteered after I gave him full warning. I know all that. Is that supposed to excuse you? I don't have to make excuses to anyone, Tara. I'm just trying to remind you of something. Your very good friend, Larry Stanford, is going to change completely. Nothing can stop them now. I might be able to separate his new self, but I'm not going to take that chance. Do you know what that means, Tara? It means when he changes, he'll be an alien thing, a species that's never walked this earth before. Do you think they'll let anything like that live? Do you think anybody will? Think it over, Tara. Ask yourself if you can afford to fall in love with a monster like... like Emiko, the woman who used to be my wife. Come in. Hello, Larry. I'm glad we found you in. Any reason why you wouldn't? Put out the sputtering fuse, will you? Are you going to ask us in? All right, come in. You know where the drinks are. 
This is my friend, Dr. Jensen, Larry. I happened to be with him tonight and asked him to come along. Hope you don't mind. Why should I? Hi, Doc. How do you do? Larry, I think you can guess why I want to talk to you. I think you know your behavior lately has not been exactly like your old self. Now, listen to me. Now, wait a minute. Don't blow your cork. I've got a couple of questions I mean to ask, whether they're my business or not. All right, go ahead and ask them. First question. Do you remember when I saw you in a bar after that old Buddhist priest was murdered? You had a string of Buddhist prayer beads with you, and you never did say why. Now, I suppose this is far-fetched, but I couldn't help feeling there was a connection. Now, tell me the truth, Larry. Did you accidentally see the murder or something like that? Did it set you off, put you in that rotten mood? Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, Ian. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Second question. Do you realize that your behavior lately has had every aspect of a man flipping his lid? What are you trying to say, Ian? Larry, Dr. Jensen is a psychiatrist, the best in Tokyo. That's why I brought him. I'd like you to let him talk to you. World Press will pick up the bill. So you're a witch doctor, eh? Well, some people do call us that. I can see right now that your case would be most interesting. Here's my card. What about an appointment tomorrow morning, say, 10 o'clock? Get out of here, both of you. Doc, you go and rattle your bones somewhere else. I don't look after my own problems. No, we you do. Out. Get out of here. Just let me alone, that's all. Get out! Just let me alone, that's all! Just let me alone! Let me alone! Police here immediately. This is urgent. Fellas, go on back to the office and write this up. I'll see you in about a half an hour. I'm afraid I've got a personal interest in this one, Superintendent. I knew Dr. Jensen very well. Mr. Matthews, I'm going to ask a favor. I wish you wouldn't print this story just yet. Not print it now. Wait a minute. 
Dr. Jensen was internationally known. This is news. Mr. Matthews, there's a killer loose in Tokyo, the worst known in 30 years, and I've got to stop him. Now, so far, we've reported every murder he's committed. This time, I want to throw him off guard. Perhaps he'll wonder why it wasn't reported. Perhaps he'll come back. When you say don't print this story, you're asking quite a bit. I have responsibility to my readers, you know. You also have one to your friend, Dr. Jensen. Believe me, Mr. Matthews, I'm determined to catch this murderer. I have to answer to my own superiors, and if I don't catch him, I'll be obliged to resign. Well, I'll hold off for the time being, but you can't keep a thing like this quiet for long. Tomorrow, there'll be a press conference in my office at 5 o'clock. I'll try to have something more definite for you by then. All right, and perhaps by that time, I'll have something for you. Must be the cleaning woman. Go on inside. Uh, Tell us so. uh, all. I, I. Gentlemen, the killings have been at these places. Usually we get a pattern from something like this, but not this time. He seems to strike blindly, without reason. That's a very impressive map, Superintendent. But just exactly what are you doing about these murders? Well, we've doubled the police on duty, and every officer carries extra arms. And we've deployed our men so that reinforcements are always nearby. I'd like to know, sir, when do you expect to catch the killer? I'm sorry, I don't know. If we could find a pattern, I might be able to estimate. But this killer, well, he doesn't even seem to be human. Any more questions, gentlemen? Is that all you've got for us? That's all I have right now. Well, thanks, Superintendent. The next time you call us in, I hope you've got more of a story. Well, Mr. Matthews, I suppose you're not satisfied either. Superintendent, I've come to a decision. Not an easy one. But I'm thinking of your men out there and all the others who may shortly find themselves victims. Yes? I'm afraid I have something very important to tell you.
yes, it does look bad. But still, you can never tell about evidence. It can be very deceiving. Hi. Hmm. Soka. Hmm. Hmm. Well, he's killed someone else. This time, one of my policemen. Are you sure it was the same killer? No doubt. And he got away again. I just can't believe it was Larry. Well, whether we're sure of it or not, Mr. Matthews, the time has come to take some precautions. Pick up Larry? Yes, if we can find him. Well, he's bound to return to his apartment sooner or later. I suppose you can put a stake out on it. I'm going to handle this personally, and I'd like you to come along. What happened? He got away. I think I know where he's going, to Taurus. Follow me. Right. that she wasn't here. But I wonder where she went to. He's going to try and get her. 
Still looking for that pattern, Superintendent? No, I'm afraid I'm just trusting to luck now. Superintendent? Yes. When you find him, will you... Will you remember that something's happened to him? Something he can't control. I know, Larry. Are you asking me not to shoot to kill? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stanford. I can't promise anything right now. Hey! Oh, what can I miss? He's been sighted at the shipyards. Come on. this and heat treatment, there's a chance. I'm not sure, but there's bound to be some sort of change. If he comes back? He'll be here. Kenji came back, remember? At the risk of being over poetic, let me put it this way. He was conceived in the mountain. He'll return to the mountain. You shouldn't have done it, Robert. You shouldn't have started the whole thing. I suppose I'm just beginning to realize that. Still, look what I've given to science. It's all in this notebook, the whole case history, except for one detail, the formula for the enzyme. I don't want this experiment to repeat it, ever. I don't know what your plans are, but don't destroy him. Not the way you destroyed Kenji, promise me that. You did fall in love with Lady Stanford, didn't you? Tara. Some of us aren't meant to know love. Not as ordinary people do. I haven't had very good luck myself in that respect. But you've got to try with Larry. You've got to try to bring him back. I tried with Kenji, and I kept trying with Emiko, even when I knew it was hopeless. I'm afraid that was a mistake. But with this new injection and heat, lots of heat, it may work. He might separate completely, split into two human beings. But Tara, what will they be? I'm leaving you, Robert. You can't leave me, Tara. We've gone through this before. 
Do you want to go back to where I found you? Yes, I'll go back to that if necessary. Don't talk like a child. Haven't I treated you well? Bought you anything you wanted? What else do you want? The illusion of respectability? All right, if that's what you want, I'll marry you. That can be arranged now. You may need this, Robert. This time, you used to be my wife. And before that, you were my sweetheart. Remember? We went to America. We went to the university together. We had wonderful plans, didn't we? We were going to be great scientists, like Pierre and Marie Curie. But it didn't work out that way, did it, Emiko? I'm sorry. I don't know why. Maybe I offended the gods. Honey, I didn't used to believe in gods. Forgive me.
I guess there's nothing else we can do now, except wait. I'll wait. I'll wait as long as I have to. It may be quite a while. I'll have to make a formal arrest when he's well enough. I have no choice. I understand, Superintendent. It's going to pose quite a legal problem. Who really did all these things? It wasn't Larry. It couldn't have been Larry. It must have been something, someone else. Why did it have to happen? Why? I don't know, Linda. He was an average sort of guy, the image of us all. How can I say this? There was good in Larry and there was evil. The evil part broke through, took hold. Call it an accident or call it a warning. A warning? I'm a reporter, not a mystic, Linda. But there are things beyond us, things perhaps we're not meant to understand. If what's happened has made this all clear, well then, perhaps it makes sense after all. Have faith, Linda. Have faith in the good that's still in Larry and in all men. Inspiring ending. The reporter basically says, don't bother trying to figure this out. Well, don't worry, no one will. We even had an erupting volcano. They threw in everything but the kitchen sink. And what about Dr. Suzuki's uh, remorseful epiphany where he demonstrizes Larry and gives him that final injection, which, which uh, makes him back into, I guess, if you can, a normal person, if he ever was a normal person person. And speaking of Larry, how about when he became the manster and got a bad case of werewolf hand? I mean, maybe that's why he was named Larry after Larry Talbot of the Wolfman who got bitten by Bela. Well, I mean, you figure it out. And the manster also features one of the creepiest scenes of all time. I think you know which one it is. I know Igor does. It's that scene where Larry discovers that that's a little more than a pimple growing on his back. So is it horror, film noir, drug addiction allegory, science fiction? Maybe it's all of these things and, and more. Why don't we just combine all those elements? Just, just put the film noir, science fiction, drug addiction, and uh, horror film elements into one, one pot and call it Manster. Chew on that for a while, students. Igor, we have said enough. It is time to retreat back into the scary dungeon. Set the students free. Good night. Professor Fred's Movie Marvels is a show you must tune in. It's broadcast every week on SEC TV. It'll make you jump out of your skin. Professor Fred's Movie Marvels. <laughs> Tonight.